but we have a lot of work to do, a lot of work to do, and we need to get the job done. And that's sort of our theme for this year is getting the job done. And our top priority in getting the job done is to create jobs in West Virginia, to create an atmosphere that the private sector can create jobs. We have more than 55,000 of our fellow West Virginians out of work today as we start this session. That's a tremendous number of West Virginians who are out of work. Those are our friends, our family members, our neighbors. Many of, of our neighbors and friends have had to move out of state to find work, and those aren't even counted in those, those statistics. Uh, so we have a real crisis on our hands in terms of job creation in, in our economy of West Virginia. And too many times we have seen excuse after excuse after excuse of why we cannot create jobs in West Virginia and move our economy forward. And it's time to stop the excuses and take bold action to do that. And we want to get the job done this year and create jobs in West Virginia. How do we do that? There are a number of factors that, that, that are play. Certainly the tax reductions that we have already talked about. We would advocate accelerating those tax reductions, not having them wait until 2014-2015. In addition to that, one of the most uh, oppressive taxes for jobs in West Virginia, it's been called a job killer in West Virginia, is the personal property tax on equipment inventory in West Virginia. That has, um, as early as, and, and I have here with me, uh, a book that I've used a lot in terms of talking about the business franchise tax. But this is a, the tax, the Governor's Commission on Fair Taxation from 1999, Governor Underwood uh, commissioned this study. It was a bipartisan study. It had the chairs of the, the House and Senate <coughs> Finance Committees. It had a number of, of tax experts. And um, I have passed out to you today, if you didn't get it, please, please uh, pick one up on your way out. But a portion of that report, and I'm only going to just touch on a couple areas there, but the, the, the report said the personal property tax has a very strong negative impact or negative effect on business. This tax has been correctly labeled as a tax on jobs. The tax on inventory discourages retail and wholesale operations. It discriminates against firms which must carry large inventories relative to sales and weighs in favor of firms which need to have little or no stock. It goes on and says the personal property tax on equipment and fixtures, fixtures discourages investment in capital. This investment is needed to raise productivity of West Virginia workers and to make the state's producers more competitive. So we have now been talking about eliminating this tax for 13 years. You know, the, this is something that we need to act on. We need to act on it this session. We need to create the jobs, put people back to work in West Virginia by, by eliminating this tax. Now, one of the challenges that we face from doing this has always been the counties and the school systems who feel they're going to lose revenue from this. And, and in fact, it will be a reduction in revenue to the counties and, and to the school systems. And so there has been a great deal of opposition to moving forward on this. And there's been a, a discussion of how can we offset that tax to the counties and to our school systems. Well, we have a, an idea of how we can do that. And we think that this is the perfect time to do it. As, as most of us have, have followed the Marcellus Shell production in West Virginia provides a great opportunity. It creates, it will create hopefully thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of new jobs in West Virginia. And certainly if we're successful in attracting a cracker facility, which we all hope we will be able to do, uh, that will be a tremendous boost to our economy and put our fellow West Virginians back to work. But it also will bring additional tax revenue into the state. And we need to talk about what we do with that tax revenue. We're not talking about increased taxes. We're not imposing a new tax. We're not uh, increasing the tax rate. But just by the additional production, it's, it's estimated that the excise tax the, that will, will come from Marcellus will more than double over the next three to four years. So that's additional revenue that will come into the state. What do we do with that? We already know that everyone seems to have proposals for what to do with that. And we know that, that everyone's hands going to be out pretty soon, probably in this, the next couple of years of how we can use that. We believe as a caucus that the best use of that is to give that money back to the people of West Virginia, to put it back into the economy, to stimulate even greater job growth in West Virginia in other sectors, in addition to the energy sector. 
So we propose taking a portion of that, that additional funding, the additional amount, not a new tax, not even touching what we already have, uh, you know, the amounts that we've already received, but the additional tax, putting that into a tax reduction fund that will allow us then to, to eliminate the personal property tax on equipment, inventory, and also to allow us to do something that we've, we as a caucus have wanted to do for several years, and that is increase the homestead exemption to allow our seniors to have some tax relief in terms of their home ownership. The, the homestead exemption is far outdated. It needs to be increased. Uh, it, it is not even as effective a tool as it was when it was passed in terms of the amount of money that goes back into the pockets of the seniors and disabled in West Virginia. We need to update that. We need to reform that tax. And th we can do that by using a portion of this tax reduction account that we would create from, from a portion of the Marcellus Shell uh, production. And that will allow us to do it and help offset the impact to school systems and counties. Will it totally offset it? No, it will not. It, you know, and la depending on how we, we go about uh, reducing this tax and how we would go about uh, what percentage we would take of that uh, Marcellus production uh, excise tax. It would, it would not likely be an entire uh, makeup of that amount, but it would certainly go a long ways in helping those counties and their school systems to be able to make up the difference of what they may lose from these, these, uh, these tax reductions. These tax reductions will create jobs. Make no mistake about it. These tax reductions will create jobs in West Virginia. And that is our chief goal during this session. There's some other things that we can do, and uh, to touch on a couple of the other issues that we would like to see occur to create jobs in West Virginia, uh, in particular, changes to our court system, our judicial system. Our focus this session is really going to be on creating an environment where jobs uh, and job creators want to come to West Virginia so that uh, our people can get back to work. One of the things that we've heard consistently over the years is that Employers are afraid to, to locate their businesses in West Virginia and hire people because they're scared of the court system. Uh, West Virginia has been uh, designated as a judicial hellhole uh, for as long as I can remember. Uh, one of the issues that leads us to that designation is the fact that we do not have a mandatory right of appeal uh, to an intermediate court of appeals in West Virginia. <clears throat> if we want to attract the types of employers who are going to provide uh, high-paying jobs with benefits to West Virginians, we have to set a fair uh, playing field for those employers so that they understand that if they do get sued, uh, they have an opportunity for a mandatory uh, review by an appellate court. Uh, that's something that uh, you know, may not have a direct effect to people uh, in their living rooms immediately, but it certainly affects the number of jobs that are created in West Virginia uh, because it attracts employers if they understand that they're going to be tre treated fairly uh, in the court system. And that's what it's about. Laying out a fair playing field so that employers who want to come here and hire West Virginians aren't afraid to do so. And so we're going to be pushing, as we have for the last couple of years, for an I a creation of an intermediate court of appeals with a mandatory right of appeal. Uh, there would be a step in between the circuit court where the trial happens and the West Virginia Supreme Court uh, where the final uh, say is delivered. Not only will that Intermediate Court of Appeals and the automatic right of appeal apply to the businesses employed, but it will also apply to plaintiffs in the cases. It's a fair system that allows whatever side you may be on a case, if you do not like the result and you feel there are legal reasons that that result is incorrect, you should have that right to have your day in court. And that's what we believe an intermediate court of appeal will provide and an automatic right of appeal will provide. In addition, we, uh, we have had a great deal of discussion during, particularly during the Marcellus Shell discussion, about the workforce in West Virginia. And in order to create jobs, we also have to ensure that we have people who are well trained to take those jobs. And so that's another component of what we want to see take place, to, to, uh, to look at some very important reforms in our educational system. We've talked about it for several years. We've made some advancements on the 180 day, ensuring that our students have 180 days of instruction. We feel we need to go further on that and remove impediments that uh, are keeping us from ensuring that our students have 180 days of instruction each year. We believe we need to, to look at the dropout rate to ensure that our 
students stay in school and, and there are certainly some very, I believe, creative and productive discussions going on of how we can do that. But we think that should be a priority. And we also need to address the drug problem in West Virginia, the scourge of drugs, not only in terms of the workforce, but throughout West Virginia and the impacts that that, that has on our families in West Virginia. Those are some initiatives that we want to work on that relate particularly to job creation, to creating an atmosphere where people will come here, will create jobs, and put our, our family members, our friends, our neighbors back to work. But there are also some other priorities that we think are important. And, and those relate to the government, the relationship of our government to the people of West Virginia. And the relationship of government and lives of West Virginians. And we believe that there are too many intrusions of government into the lives of West Virginians, into our economy in West Virginia. We also believe that our government is out of touch with the people of West Virginia. And we need to take some steps to ensure that that communication, which is a key part of any government or any governmental body, the communication between the people and the government in, in both directions. And we want to take some steps to improve that. And uh, I certainly agree. The measurement of reason and balance, responsibility and common sense here in West Virginia has tilted. The House Republican Caucus will work to give government back to the people. We must stand up for the rights of hardworking West Virginians and West Virginia and her people today suffer under heavy hand of government overreach, results in job losses, hostility, hostility towards our energy here in West Virginia and our energy sector workers, but also it's a threat to our individual <coughs> liberties. A couple things we'd like to work on is the repeal of the West Virginia cap and trade like scheme, the West Virginia Renewable and Energy Portfolio Act. It, uh, it created tradable credits with a cap on traditional energy. And it's self-imposed right here at the state capitol. Over time, the cap and the mandates get tighter and heavier, and it results in higher electric bills for our families across West Virginia. It's not supported by the people, this many cap and trade, and it needs repealed now. We'd also like to opt out of Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, the federal government takeover of our health care system. We would urge the Attorney General to join with the Attorney Generals from across the nation to join in the lawsuit fighting Obamacare. Here in West Virginia, we have joined with California, the only other state moving so quickly to implement this law. The cost this year to our state budget exceed a hundred million dollars and it'll exceed hundreds of millions of dollars in the coming years. Again, West Virginians do not support a federal government takeover of our health care system and we're looking to act. On any new government regulations, we think it's responsible for us to add a job impact statement. It's something we've worked on before and we plan to work for again, but also automatic sunset provisions and periodic reviews of outcome measurements of those regulations to see how they're acting and what their impacts are. Friends, this isn't, a, isn't about partisan politics, it's about West Virginia families. They're struggling. Jobs are on the line. Home mortgages, college savings, car payments, our friends and neighbors are struggling and we must act. Enough is enough with the big government overreach. We will fight to bring back reason, common sense, responsibility, and balance to our government and fight for the people. Finally, let me just say in terms of the discussion about um, ensuring that the people of West Virginia know what goes on in this capital, have input into what goes on in this, cap in this capital, uh, we have some very um, important measures that we think need to be, be taken. First of all, let me say that I think I speak on behalf of every member here when I say that we feel very honored to represent the people we represent in our districts. We are honored to have the opportunity to be their representative here in the Capitol. And we think it's very important, a very important part of that process is to be in communication with our constituents, to, to have their thoughts on the issues that we take up. We need to also share with them what's going on here so that they have an open window 
to the government of West Virginia. And in order to do that, I think we've seen some weaknesses in that, that process, over the, particularly in terms of the redistricting process. And we think we need to take some steps to change that, to make sure our government is in touch with the people of West Virginia. One of the things that we've had some progress on, but we need much more work on, is the openness and transparency of our budget process. People need to know how their doc tax dollars are being spent. They need to be able to have a searchable database that they can really go in uh, that is not complicated, that they can go in and see exactly how their tax dollars are being spent, what the impact of those expenditures are, whether they're working, whether they're not working, and so that the, the people of West Virginia, who, who are the ones who are working every day to put those dollars into the state coffers, know what they're being spent on. So we want to continue to work toward a Budget and Spending Transparency Act. Uh, we, we are pleased that the governor has, has put out a... Uh, a process on the internet but we feel that that process and that that program is not really user friendly and we think there are some significant changes we can make to ensure that people really can know how their tax dollars are being spent. In addition, uh, we think that there are have been uh, over the, the past few months in particular we've seen some examples of how our West Virginia Freedom of Information Act really doesn't work in terms of giving information out to the people. And you and the media know this, you know how important it is that you be able to get information to put out to the people of West Virginia. We think there are too many exceptions to that act. There is an exception, for example, on memorandum and letters. Well, those types of things are exactly where a lot of the action would take place in terms of the steps taken by state government. And we feel that there are revisions that need to be made so that information is more readily available to the people of West Virginia. In addition, we think that there needs to be a more workable and more receptive uh, process for public hearing and public comment for, for actions that are taken by the legislature. It was inexcusable that we did not have a meaningful public hearing on redistricting. To have a public hearing with less than 24 hours notice and without even having maps in front of people was inexcusable. We cannot allow that to happen again. And we're going to do what we can to make sure it doesn't happen. In addition to that, when we had a second request for public hearing, it wasn't even granted uh, because of a particular reading of rules which we did, with which we disagreed. That was inexcusable. We need to change the process so that we can be assured and that the people of West Virginia can be assured that they will have meaningful input into legislation that's considered in West Virginia. And we're going to, to push for changes along those lines. So with that, we want to go back again, just in closing, our top priority is to put people back to work in West Virginia. That is our top priority. It should be the top priority of all 100 members of this House and all 34 members of the Senate and the governor. It should be the top priority to, to create an atmosphere where people can work and can support their families and get up and earn a paycheck every day. That should be our top priority. We're going to, we're going to put all of our energy and effort in trying to ensure that when we leave here in 60 days, we have made steps that will ensure that West Virginians can, can, can go to work every day and that those who have left West Virginia to find jobs in their states can come back. That's going to be our top priority. We want to get the job done. We want no more excuses. We don't want any more studies. We don't want more consideration. We, we know that there are steps that need to be taken. No more excuses. Let's get this job done.